Let's have a really quick crash course into SharePoint and SharePoint terminology. I think it's really important to make sure that before I or anyone else starts throwing out terms like site and document and library and list, that we talk about what those actually mean in SharePoint because in fact, there is quite a bit of confusion around this even amongst people who have been working with it for a long time. So if you are someone that's been working with this for quite a while, or if you're brand new to SharePoint, hopefully this will help illuminate at the very least a little bit of that terminology you might hear. So first of all, when someone says, hey, go to the SharePoint site, well, what does that mean? Typically that means you're gonna type in the address of the SharePoint application into your browser, and it's gonna open up a landing page or a welcome page for the site, the SharePoint site that you're visiting. And you can think of a site as kind of like a top level container or a big container that you can put stuff into. And the site can be organized any way you want. As the owner of a site, you can create all kinds of containers. You can put files in it, you can put data in it, and it can do all sorts of things, but the organization is really up to you. But in any typical environment, what you'll see within a SharePoint site is you're gonna have things like libraries. Libraries are kind of like containers within the site that allow you to upload documents to them. So for example, a library might have a spreadsheet or a Word document or a picture that you're adding. And it's really any type of file that you want, but what they have in common is all of these files are gonna be uploaded to a library and that library belongs to a site in SharePoint. Similarly, you have what is called a list. A list shares a lot of similarities with a library, except a list contains items. And examples of lists include, you could have a list of links. You could have a list of contact information for contacts in your department, or you could have a list of events that are upcoming throughout the calendar year, such as a holiday calendar. And lists differ from library because everything in a single list is of like kind. Meaning, whenever you have a list of events, the events have data like the start date of that event and the end date and the location where the event is held. You're not going to keep a different type of data like a link in the same list. They would be stored in two separate lists. And also, lists tend to be just data. They don't necessarily have a file associated with them like you would have in a library. So you can almost think of each individual list as a spreadsheet of just rows and columns or uh, even a database table if you will. But the point is, within your site, you can have any number of libraries or lists. And within those libraries and lists, you can have any number of documents and items. And the organization of all these libraries and all these lists is totally up to the discretion of the owner of that particular site. And that kind of is the beauty of SharePoint, is that you can do anything you want with it. Furthermore, within any particular site, you could have other sites. So containers within containers. And you could even take this further and say within these sites, you could have even more sites. And then every single one of the sites that you see on the screen right now could have its own collection of lists and libraries and documents and items. But at its core, it's basically just a hierarchy of parent and child sites, which can then in turn have libraries and lists within each of those sites. And as a whole, this whole thing that you see on the screen is referred to as the site collection. It is a collection of sites. And you could even go further. You can actually have multiple site collections in one SharePoint environment. For example, in Office 365, in SharePoint Online, you can create as many site collections as you like. So hopefully you guys can see that the structure of a, any given SharePoint site collection kind of lends itself to being organized in this site and list and library sort of structure. You're using these containers to decide how you wanna organize your data, but there is some confusion here because it's not quite as easy as just saying, this is a site, this is a site collection. Unfortunately, there is some ambiguity when it comes to these terms, and this is gonna frustrate you even years down the road. It's gonna be like, well, what the heck, Microsoft? Why don't you just make up your mind? But it's okay, I'm here to help. Hopefully I'm gonna point you guys in the right direction here. And take the site collection, for example. Sometimes this is actually referred to as a site. And you may be thinking, well, what the heck? I thought the sites were in the site collection down below. And you're absolutely right. It is confusing. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense. You just need to know that there's some ambiguity here. 
Also with your site that is the top level or the, the highest parent in this hierarchy at the very top there, that could have some special names as well. For example, sometimes it's called the root site or the top level site or even what's called the root web. And likewise, when you have sites within the top level site, those could be called subsites because they're sites within the top level site, uh, but they could also be called webs. And context matters. For example, in a lot of cases, what you're gonna see in the web browser when you're actually interacting with the UI of SharePoint in the page, they do use the terms site collection, site, and subsite for the most part. Not always, but for the most part. However, when you're dealing with things like web services and you're looking at the technical documentation of SharePoint, you're typically gonna see the terms site, root web, and web. And that's very different from what you see in the UI. And that's really where the ambiguity comes from is the difference between the technical documentation and the actual interface when you're using SharePoint. And likewise, whenever you're dealing with that developer documentation, a library is technically called a list and documents are technically called items. So again, a little bit of ambiguity there, but only in the context of things like web services and technical documentation. So I know this seems crazy, I know that seems really confusing, but the good news is there's really only a few things on the screen here. So even if you mix this up or you forget or you, you don't remember something exactly and or in what context it's called what, uh, we're really only dealing with site collections, sites, lists, libraries, documents, and items. That's, that's all we have on the screen here. So if you know that all of those things exist, then you're probably gonna be in pretty good shape. So with that in mind, let's take a little bit of a closer look at lists and libraries because that's where all our data is, right? That's where all of your files, all of your, your list items, all of your actual SharePoint data is generally gonna be contained in these lists and these libraries. And lists and libraries are all about rows and columns. So for example, you could have some data like these contacts that you see here, and you could have a row for each entry. So we have uh, Kyle Schaefer, John Doe, and Jane Doe. So each one of those rows is an entry of data. And then you have columns. Each column describes the data that's been entered into this table. So we have columns like first name, last name, and company. It's describing what a contact is in this case. And if you actually look at a list in a SharePoint site, that's exactly what it looks like. It's all about rows and columns. So you see in this case, we have a silly example of some lemonade stand earnings, and we have rows for each year of earnings as well as columns for the quarterly income or the quarterly earnings from each year. And it's the exact same thing for document libraries. This is what a document library looks like in SharePoint. And you'll see here, there are rows and columns. Even though each row is a file, there's metadata associated with that file. So documents have columns too. And technically behind the scenes, a document is really just a special list item in SharePoint. So keep that in mind, rows and columns, very important in SharePoint because what that boils down to is a set of columns is a content type in SharePoint. And content types are really important. They help you describe what sort of data you wanna store in your SharePoint site. For example, you could have a content type for a contact, just like in the example we just saw, that can contain things like the first name, the last name, the company that that person belongs to, and then some contact information for them, like their email and phone number. And each one of the things in that content type is a column. So just like you would see in a spreadsheet where you'd have columns for each entry, a content type is basically defining what those columns are. Another example might be an event. This is another list item. It could have a title, a location, a start date, and an end date, for example. And similarly, files and documents in SharePoint have content types too. So for example, you could have a photo content type. And that could actually be a file that you upload into SharePoint, but nonetheless, it has a content type because there's some metadata there. There is the file name, the date that the picture was taken, a description or a photo credit that is associated with that photo. And just about all content that you could possibly add to SharePoint does have a content type. Even if you don't realize it has a content type, it certainly does. Anytime you add data to a library or a list, there is a content type there. 
And one of the most common things that people do when they want to customize a SharePoint site is they create their own content types. Maybe you have some kind of specific data for your business or for your department that you want to store in a list or along with your files in a library. You can go in and create your own custom content type and capture special metadata or special columns for your items however you want by defining these content types. And this is actually very powerful. This is one of the coolest things about SharePoint is that it's so customizable. You can totally customize the way you want to store your data. It doesn't require a database administrator to set up some fancy database schema. You just go in and you create these content types and then you just start adding stuff to it and it just keeps track of all this. And it's actually really quite cool. So I should also mention, because a large part of this course is dealing with web parts and web parts are placed on pages in SharePoint, pages are just a special content type. So anytime you're viewing something in the web browser, you're actually looking at a page in that SharePoint environment. And believe it or not, that page belongs to a pages library, just like a photo would be uploaded to some sort of library. Your pages in SharePoint actually are in a library as well. And just like all other data in SharePoint, it has a content type, it has columns, and it has rows. And so even the visual things that you see in the interface within SharePoint, the pages where you can add your web parts and add your text and add your images, those are really just behind the scenes, a special type of document. So just to summarize, everything in SharePoint has to do with site collections, sites, lists and their items, libraries and their documents, and content types and their columns. If you can wrap your head around these few things on this slide, then you're going to be in really good shape anytime you work with SharePoint. And yes, there's some ambiguity. Sometimes it's hard to tell based on the context what's going on in SharePoint. But the good news is it really boils down to just a few things. I would highly recommend taking some time, familiarizing yourself with all these features of a SharePoint site. Look into it, create some pages, create some lists and libraries, upload stuff create your own content types, and it's really gonna help you understand the way the platform works. And that is essential in becoming a good developer in SharePoint. You really have to understand the way it works before you can understand how to customize it. I hope this is helpful. I hope everyone is now on the same page. And now when I use the term site, nobody's gonna run away screaming and you may have a vague idea as to what I actually mean by that. Great, so thanks for listening and we will get started right back in to our SharePoint framework development in just a moment.